تكون تعبانة تكون تعبانة تروح تقعد في بيتها وتبعث لأولادها وتبعث لأولادها Do you feel sometimes that you made a mistake in agreeing to Oslo? Arafat answered, No, no. Allah's Messenger, Muhammad, accepted the al hadabiyah peace treaty, and Saladin accepted the peace agreement with Richard the Lionhearted. While Arafat became less diplomatic, the Israeli misunderstanding turned into denial. By being optimistic, I was also right. The jihad continues. Meanwhile, the new Palestinian Islamic fundamentalist group, Hamas, expanded under the protection of the PLO in Gaza and carried out suicide bombings throughout Israel. Rabin stated, the Israeli dead in these attacks were part of the price for peace. Hoping to end Rabin's policies, a Jewish extremist assassinated him in 1995. Your prime minister was a martyr for peace. Surely we must learn from his martyrdom. The rightist Likud party, led by Benjamin Netanyahu, won the next election on a promise to revoke the Oslo Accords but instead simply continued them at a slower pace. Having accomplished nothing, the Likud was replaced by the Labor Party. This led to the Camp David talks, which broke down in August 2000, when Israel agreed to everything, except for the right of return of millions of Arabs into Israel proper. So together with Hamas, Arafat and the PLO resumed the military jihad. and the revolt of Islam. The Islamist Al-Qaeda's attacks of 9-11-2001 focused on the tallest buildings and symbols of the West's superiority and actually had nothing to do with a war against the West. It was part of the internal battle for Islam, meant to manipulate a military reaction from America then use that reaction to invigorate the masses to revolt against their secular governments. With vigilance, determination, courage, we will defeat the enemies of freedom. The United States fell into the trap, invading Afghanistan and then Iraq. For America, 9-11 was more than a tragedy. It changed the way we look at the world. Even more important, Al-Qaeda hoped the 9-11 attacks would convince America to re-examine and change its Middle East policies. The status quo in the Middle East before September the 11th was dangerous and unacceptable. So we're pursuing a new strategy. America has committed its influence in the world to advancing freedom. <laughs> We must seek stability through a free and just Middle East. And the government should continue to move forward with other reforms. Due to the misunderstanding of 9-11, America played into the hands of the Islamists by advocating democratic reforms across the Middle East. Citizens have voted in municipal elections in Saudi Arabia and in multi-party presidential elections in Yemen and Egypt. Thus, the 9-11 attacks were successful only because America was unwittingly used militarily and politically to help further the Islamist agenda and Islam's revival across Dar al-Islam. In November 2004, Yasser Arafat died and the United States insisted on Palestinian elections. With our help, the people of the Middle East are now stepping forward to claim their freedom. 
Predictably, in January 2005, the Islamist Hamas party won the vote and chose an Islamist prime minister. In fact, wherever free elections are held in Dar al-Islam, Muslims choose Islamist parties, which Muslims believe is the route to revival of their society. Farewell, Israel. Iran and the danger to the West. Misunderstanding and war. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, a sincere man who abhors war, flies to Munich to meet Hitler. They are joined by French Premier Deladier and Benito Mussolini. Chamberlain tells his people, I believe it is peace in our time. Yesterday afternoon, I had a long talk with Herr Hitler. It was a frank talk, but it was a friendly one. And I feel satisfied now that each of us fully understands what is in the mind of the other. Here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Oh, oh. The definition of war is the failure of diplomacy, which is the result of misunderstanding. Islam is undergoing a historic revival after 300 years of decline, returning to its historic formula for success, whereby Islam and religion govern the Ummah. On its road to revival, Islam must reacquire Palestine to redeem itself from westernization and the humiliation of a Dimi state. Therefore, western peace between Israel and Islam is unattainable. Peace can only be achieved in Islamic terms, peace with justice, which requires the eradication of political independence of Jews and return of the Jews to Dimi status and the domination of the Ummah over them. Israel's world support. Israel believed that retreating from territory under the Camp David and Oslo Accords would gain it world support. This despite Israel's prior 50-year history of world support, which had seen most Western countries collude in some way in the Holocaust. An arms embargo on Israel during Israel's War of Independence. The arming of Muslim countries. The lack of intervention in 1967 when destruction was imminent. The obstruction of the U.S. arms resupply in 1973 the UN Zionism is Racism Resolution, and eager assistance to Iraq and Iran and others in obtaining weapons of mass destruction. Machiavelli observed that states survive on respect, not love. While in world affairs, the smart, the strong and the agile succeed, while the naive and weak fail. The Islamist Strategic Agenda. Be fazl elahi, masir bahramandi kamil, az hamey zarfiyat hastei, rube payan ast. 
Iran, Syria, and other Muslim states have acquired strategic missiles and weapons of mass destruction, believing that gaining the upper hand in the balance of power with Israel will precipitate Israel's destruction and Islam's revival. Iran believes Israel cannot absorb a major blow in its heart, the greater Tel Aviv area, and survive the civilian casualties and destruction of infrastructure. <laughs> the mere capability of Iranian missiles to lay waste to Tel Aviv would create a strategic umbrella preventing Israel from using its superior strategic assets in a conventional war. With Israeli missiles neutralized, in any war, Muslim countries would overwhelm Israel with their superior numbers, conventional armor, and short-range missiles. If Israel does use its non-conventional missiles, Israel would receive a fatal missile attack, while Dar al-Islam would only suffer collateral damage. Either way, Islam would reclaim Palestine for the Ummah. The coming war. The world now faces a grave threat from the radical regime in Iran and we must not allow Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. The coming war is likely to be ignited in several ways. The United States cannot accept a nuclear-armed Iran, nor will Israel. An attack on Iran is likely, and Iran has promised severe retaliation against Israel, U.S. bases, and U.S. interests throughout the Middle East if its nuclear facilities are attacked. Islamist uprisings in Egypt, Turkey, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia would raise regional tensions to the point where all countries mobilize their armed forces. Israel would likely be drawn into any regional war that could involve serious unrest in Kurdistan, with Iran and Turkey moving into Iraq, or an Iranian advance on western-backed Azerbaijan. Israel would be attacked to achieve certain war aims, as Saddam Hussein demonstrated by attacking Israel in 1991. Ballistic missiles have a very short preparation time, allowing a surprise attack to destroy vital assets such as airfields and command and control stations. Due to Israel's small number of major targets, Israel could be defeated by a surprise ballistic missile attack. Many in this chamber understand that America must not fail in Iraq. Contagion of violence could spill out across the country. And in time, the entire region could be drawn into the conflict. With Israel weakened through diplomacy, Israel is no longer a strategic asset for the United States, but instead a security burden. With many interests at stake, in a regional war, the United States would likely not be willing or able to defend Israel. My vision is two states living side by side in peace. Years of misunderstanding of Islam by the Jews and the West would result in the Jewish tributary state being reunited with Dar al-Islam. Consequences for the West. In order to prosper in the world, the United States needs countries sympathetic to Western democracy, and U.S. security requires a global environment that includes a friendly and secure Western Europe, Japan, and Australia. The loss of Israel as a genuine Western ally in the Middle East will erode Western security, and a Middle East war will bring changes to most governments and borders. Other long-standing Western alliances will change with the natural revival of Islamic rule across Dar al-Islam. The West will suffer economic setbacks as disruption of oil supplies